Hey guys, I'm Tim Lanks with Red Dog Bushcraft and I just finished a video where I wet formed and utilized a food a vacuum sealer to wet form this sheath and I've also got it treated in this right here. This is a new product put out by Havilah's Bush Tools and it's called Gear Wax and it's good for a multitude of different purposes but the main purpose it was created for was taking care of our knives. So now that the sheath is taken care of, this knife needs a little bit of uh, tender love and care. As you can see, we've got a nice patina on the blade, but uh, it's been through a lot of use and it's to the point now where it's really beyond strop and we need to put it back on a stone, get it cleaned up and get it protected back in the sheath and ready to carry every day. So stand by here and I'll show you exactly how I do that. And we're going to be working with the large work, <laughs> large work horse is the name of the knife, this style. It's made by Battle Horse Knives. It's one that I won a couple of years ago in a competition at the Pathfinder Gathering. It's made of 01 tool steel. It's 5 30 seconds of an inch thick. So we've got a good sized blade there. It's in a Scandinavian grind. It's eight and a half inches in overall length and it has about a three and five sixteenths cutting edge. I believe it retailed somewhere between $150 and $170 uh, on the website back during the time that I won this knife. So it was a really good prize and I've enjoyed using this knife for a couple of years now. The only thing I've done previously to this as far as sharpening this knife has just been stropping it. So it's time to get it back on a stone and get that Scandinavian grind uh, cleaned back up and then the blade protected. So stand by and I'll show you the steps of how I do that. All right, I'm gonna give you kind of an over the shoulder shot here. This is the Smith Trihome. This is a pretty inexpensive stone. I decided to use this one because it's something that can be picked up at some of your local hardware stores. It's pretty commonly found. And it has a coarse, a medium, and a fine stone that sets in this little uh, notch here. And the bottom has some rubber feet, but I find that it's handy if we put it on some type of a non-slip surface. All right, once the stone has been wetted, wetted, soaked, I'm going to take that knife, find the angle of my Scandinavian grind just by rotating the knife, laying it flat, and then rotating it so that the entire cutting surface here is making contact with the stone. Then at that point, I will push it forward, rotating and lifting the handle so that I stay in a good contact so that I maintain this line here. So we come back, I find the angle, we push down, I come up with the handle maintaining that contact at the tip and finish out. And the goal is to utilize the entire stone as we go through this process. So let me do just a little bit of it and I'll show you exactly how that goes and then we'll move on. Either way, you can do it this way. There's certain people who say that it has to be done either pushing, it needs to be done pulling, that it needs to be a total slice like this, maintaining good contact the entire way. And some people like finding a spot and slowly going back and forth as they work their way out, maintaining pressure right here on the cutting or where the Scandinavian grind starts to angle down and doing it this way. You know what? The idea here is to remove metal off of the blade. I don't think it matters which way you do it. I think what matters is that you're consistent of maintaining this angle and keeping this part in perfect contact with this stone and not letting it ride up and doing this on you. 
as long as you're doing that you do it about the same amount of strokes on one side as you do the other and I do try to do that so that I maintain a center line with that Scandinavian grind I think you're just fine but you find what works best for you let me hit the other side and do that exact same process on the other three stones and I'll be right back Okay, so we finished up with the coarse side and now we put our medium side down in the water and let it soak. And now we're going to repeat the process with the medium stone. Flip it over. And just keep working on it. And the idea is the coarse stone is going to put marks on the blade because it's coarse. I want to come to the medium side and I want to remove all of those marks. When I get to the fine side, it's going to be just to give it that finished polish. So I'm going to continue to work on this blade until all of those little scratch marks are gone. I'll be right back. Okay, so we're getting in pretty good shape there. So now we'll take that, we'll rinse that off, and uh, soak the fine side for a minute, and give it a couple of hits on that side. So I know someone's going to ask me, um, how much did it take? How many strokes on each side? Well, you know, there's no magic number. It depends on your individual knife. It depends on uh, what kind of shape the blade was in. Was it just dull like this one or did it have any nicks in it? There's a lot to decide. But you saw what this blade looked like. And uh, just to be fair and try to answer that question, I did 15 sets like I'm doing right here. Alright, so that would be a set. Here would be another set. So I rub it back and forth up and down the stone until I've covered the whole blade and then I work my way back um, down the blade and I consider that one. I did that 10 times on the coarse side. I did it 30 times on the medium side and I'll do it on this side until it polishes up. At the going rate it'll probably be about 90 passes. This is 01 tool steel. And uh, I believe it's rock right weld out at somewhere around 58. Holds a great edge. And uh, like I said, most of the time you can just drop it up. But uh, now that it's dull, wow, that's really come back nice. Uh, maybe it will not take that many strokes on the fine side, but I'll keep at it and uh, I'll let you know Okay, so it didn't take that much I would say uh, about 30 passes again and we're in real good shape and that knife is plenty sharp for my liking Now to clean my stone up all I do is I put it underneath water And yeah, I know you're gonna find this hard to believe but I either use degreaser or just a little bit of Dawn dishwashing soap and a little scrubby pad. And I just wash the stone down like that, rinse it off good, move to the next stone, put a few drops on it, rub it in with my hand. This is a fast process, it doesn't take a whole lot. I use nothing but water on this stone, so uh, there's no oils to clean off. I don't like using oils. I do have a couple of stones that uh, have had oil on them, so I continue to use oil on those stones, and I just use a uh, knife sharpening oil for those. But pretty much all of my other stones I just clean up like this. If I don't use Dawn, 
Another product that I like to use is Simple Green Degreaser. Grease Lightning works well as well. I really haven't tried any other degreasers, although I imagine any of them would work pretty well. It's just that those are the two that I keep around the house, and that's what I have experience with. I'll dry those off a little bit, wipe out the bottom, kind of give that a quick wipe down, and then that's ready to go back into the box, back out into the garage. Okay, so the final step in this process is to just wipe the knife down, try to get it dry, go over it with a paper towel, remember to wipe it away from you now, she is sharp, and uh, you know usually I go over it with a strop, but that is just so sharp. Uh, the thing about a Scandinavian grind, if you there is a such thing as getting it too sharp. You can actually get the, the point so sharp that when you start to work wood with it, uh, it can actually have a tendency to dull real fast. That edge rolls over back and forth, it'll actually chuck. So a strop helps round that off. But for some reason, it's feeling good right the way it is. So I'll have a strop with me in the field if I need it, I'll have it. I've washed my hands and uh, I've got some of this gear wax by Havilis that I treated the uh, the sheath with and I'm just going to put a very light coat with my finger remembering to rub down against that cutting edge. I see people rub their finger straight down and I just cringe when I see that. You can do that up here on the top and around the, uh, the back spine of the knife but <laughs> When you get down around that cutting edge, you really need to be conscientious about going away from it. Like I said, I wash my hands before I start dipping my finger down into this gear wax because I have found so many medicinal uses for it that I want to keep it so that I can use it for first aid and as a lip balm. So I'm trying to be careful and not contaminate it. I'm going to come all the way down where the knife is full tang, put just a very, very light coat on that. I do not want to get a waxy or greasy build up on my scales. I just want to put a little bit on that metal. And as you can see, this knife has developed a nice patina and I'm not going to try to clean that off. But I think that's going to set us in pretty good shape. All right, so we're going to just wipe that uh, that gear wax, not completely off, but wipe off any excess buildup with a clean towel, and uh, we're ready to go back into sheath. So there we go, all maintained, the sheath's treated, snaps in nice, <laughs> snaps out. So. Retention is a lot better than it was. I'm not going to get too aggressive because I don't want to see how well it is in here in the house with my nine covered feet. <laughs> don't want to turn this into a first aid video. All right, so there you go. There's the finished product, sheath and knife, all squared away and ready to be back on the belt for the everyday carry. Thanks for joining me for this quick video. Um, I'll see you real soon. I'll try to post another video uh, in the next couple of days. So take care. Until next time, I'm Tim Langston with Red Dog Bushcraft, home of global safety and survival. God bless.